This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here from the wonderful Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And welcome to third winter, apparently. <laughs> it uh, uh, is now how I would like to refer to it. Uh, thank you, Missy, for, for helping me out with that. What did you hear from somewhere else? Oh, you're giving me a face. Producer Missy is off strike, which means there's lots of um, gesturing going on usually. Usually a finger. Uh, but anyways, uh, we have with us a, a whole crew, a cool crew, hanging out in, back in the studio. Uh, Director of Sales and Marketing with The Scare House is Ooh, Katie Dudas. I'm very scary. You're very scary? <laughs> you just spent the weekend at uh, Steel City Con. I did. And I wrestling. Like, yeah, I did a lot of things this Interviewing weekend. snake people. Yes, I did. Yes. With very pretty eyes. <laughs> With very pretty <laughs> eyes. <laughs> oh, jeez. So yeah, no, you helped out with the Indie Mayhem show uh, mm-hmm. this week, uh, and they're uh, a little bit of a different interview going on. Mm-hmm. So uh, thank you so much for helping out for that with the, the Night of the Superstars up in Meville, PA. Oh, that was so much fun. And, uh, <laughs> and, and and it looks like you were having a blast down there at Steel City Con, too. Yeah, I did, actually. So awesome. <laughs> also with us from Studio C in, you know, far, far away in Dormont, PA, it is in the in the, the snow covered Dormont the, area. Snow covered. We have no well, snow on the ground here. It's just. Yeah, well, I guess there's some on the roofs. There was it was the grasses were covered this oh, morning. Oh, okay. Now the weather report for Pittsburgh do, is done. Uh, John Jachilla joining us, of course, from Studio also C. Also, was at Steel City Con over the weekend and yes. got to see Dudders. Yes, and with us, I I I didn't realize he was never on this show. <laughs> We've had him on Awesome Chat. So he's been in the studio for other things. Some things I've yet to release, which I'll get to here We're sorry, sooner Crystal. or later. Sorry, Crystal. Uh, but Scott McTaggart is joining us from Pitchworks and other things, too. What, what, what all is going on with you these days? I stay busy. You stay busy. The answer to the yes. question is I stay yeah. busy. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I appreciate being on the main show. Like, I watch the main show. Mm-hmm. Right? We see you in the chat room every once in a while. It's great. Yeah, I don't know that I'm ever actually, like, you know, helping your cause or anything. I have a mm-hmm. feeling, like, if every once in a while I do something that leads to consternation. But mm-hmm. anyway, mm-hmm. yes, that's me. You can find me on the Pitchworks podcast. We release every Wednesday over at the Epicast Studios. And uh, you can find us at pitchworks.com, P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S. There you go. And, and Buzzy, Buzzy is uh, representing in the chat room as well. Hello, uh, Your producer as well. So uh, thank you, everybody that's joined us. Uh, I see Brandon out there from Kansas City as well. And uh, uh, Ron Krause is in there. And people usually drop in and out throughout the night. And some of them are just waiting for my show to start. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> especially because I think we're going to run a little bit later tonight. But anyways, uh, this is uh, the Awesome Cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.com, Twitter at awesomecast. Awesome cast on the Facebook. You can subscribe to this podcast form in iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Music, uh, Google Music, and uh, of course, video versions on the Facebook and YouTube page. And we are live here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Awesome Cast Facebook. We also stream the replay over at RiversEdgePGH.com. Uh, Saturdays at 9 a.m. You can find the Rivers Edge on TuneIn. And also our friends on the West Coast, the 405Media.com, uh, weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time. And also, uh, speaking of River's Edge. Uh, we just saw on this past week for River Talk for the awesome thing of the month. Uh, typically every third Sunday, I think that I might be traveling for the May uh, date for that, so it might be a little bit of a change there, but we had a lot of fun. We actually we actually created a new segment, Awesome Thing of the Month became 
awesome or not awesome with his gavel because uh, <laughs> we we had to use the gavel because that's what they usually do. Digging it. It's so uh, so. I had a lot of fun with Brian Crawford over there, who will be joining us here, um, I think, shortly on the show uh, in the next couple of weeks too. He's got more awesome things, and he may show him off in the bathroom again. Who knows? Who knows if you've been uh, listening for a bit. Uh, also, if you want to be part of our studio audience, hit us up at uh, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, of course, we're here every every Tuesday night. Uh, we put up uh, uh, events on our page to let you know who's coming in um, in general and, and if there's a show. Because every once in a while we do uh, reschedule due to things going on. Uh, and uh, and and uh, you guys can be a part of it. And we, we, we do encourage the studio audience for this and the Wrestling Mayhem show here on Tuesday nights. Um, also, thank you to our awesome uh, Patreoners. Uh, you can support the show, help keep the lights on here in the studio at uh, patreon.com slash awesomecast. At the Coffee Club $5 le- level, they get the uh, Mayhem, or I'm sorry, Awesome Cast, what show is this? Awesome Cast Gold, <laughs> where we uh, have a little bit of off uh, topic, maybe not as awesome chat, although there's going to be a little bit of maybe not awesome chat this episode unfortunately i try to keep it positive but sometimes it's really hard and especially if i have to retract something i talked about on the show last week uh but anyways uh coffee club member five dollar level matt weller out there at the other end of the state um and uh of course at the one dollar fan of the show level michael fedor uh mike fedor show on the twitter thank you so much you guys for supporting the show it means a lot to us uh to see that and if you want to get your message out there with us um there we do offer, offer advertising uh, uh, abilities as well uh his up awesome cast at sorgatronmedia.com uh and missy producer missy will be in contact with you not me which may add a little bit of confidence dude uh, wait wait can i help to, <laughs> can i help to pitch the advertising for a second sure, i mean sure. it's kind of what i do right? okay it's kind of what pitch works is y- you know what i mean it's <laughs> Total brand integration. That's the key, right? It is. All right. So anyway. We uh, we have an, a real Italian to talk about Slice on Broadway on the wrestling show later. Lately. Oh, that's pretty hot. We're anyway. completely working it in. I have a pizza problem. But anyway, um, <laughs> the advertising. Like, we seriously need to talk about you guys increasing the, the price of the advertising. <laughs> okay? Like, this is rubbing me a little bit the wrong way. Okay? And I'm not going to embarrass you by talking about, like, what value people are getting on the advertising. But it's there. <laughs> Let's just say that if you need advertising, you should be doing this. Is that fair? I haven't embarrassed anybody? No, no, okay. no. Next, we'll talk about... Up in that. I'm up just that. saying, yeah. He's that, gesturing for you guys on audio. Yeah, you guys on audio only. No, no, it's not that finger. It's the other one. Yeah. <laughs> not the usual finger. <laughs> not the usual finger, no. <laughs> Por que no los dos, right? <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we we seriously just need to turn up the volume on that. On we that do, ad we do. Man. Again, we got up it and and, uh, and and get to get the mayhem going. We know, honestly, man. for real, should probably have a conversation about advertising after the show. Anyway. <laughs> yes, absolutely. While it's uh, priced to move, but and right now, just remember, I'm the guy that told you to increase the price, so I don't want any of those shenanigans run on me first. Okay? <laughs> okay, I get some sort of grandfather discount. You get the old rates. Okay, I was the honesty <laughs> discount, right? Right, right. Well, it's time to talk about awesome things of the week and uh we got a few of them lined up here so uh first uh katie what's your awesome thing so we, we talked about anger before is a podcasting kind it's of anchor pod. anchor okay anchor can i say anchor i wasn't sure if it came out clear i heard anger i heard anger, anger. i anger. heard anger i think we were talking about the other thing early i'm the yes I can't help that, it. that might be a little bit too i am quite the yinzer uh but anchor uh can find you a podcast co-host now and Anchor is this, like, I know, like, Gary Vee's been talking mm-hmm. about it a lot and everything. And, like, it's, like, kind of an all-in-one app I want to record on my phone uh, and, and put a podcast out mm-hmm. kind of situation. So it's becoming a whole whole thing. Yeah, now they're matching you with people. Essentially, you're putting out a topic that you want to talk about. And within about, they said it should be pretty instantaneous if somebody, well, I guess if you're talking about something pretty common, you'll find somebody you'll get a match with. Uh, then you'll have 30 seconds to kind of introduce yourself and then decide if you're going to do this. And then you'll start recording a podcast together. Mm. Which on, would be All a, on your phone. Yeah. Which would be a fun podcast. Like if you just like this was Sorg Talks to Strangers about X topic. Are you challenging me? Yes. Are you challenging me to start a new podcast yes. like I need one? Yes. <laughs> Sorg talks to strangers about stuff. Mm. Actually, it might be better if it was Dutters talks that's to strangers kind of, about stuff. Yeah, it might be a little more interesting. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of the awesome chat in the Indie Mayhem show for me already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
but it's, it's it looks pretty cool that they do give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down mm-hmm. um whether or not it works out if you both give a thumbs up though they'll automatically be favored on each other's accounts so they can find each other again later um if they want to record again so you'll have a, it's also a record with friends feature where you can uh essentially record with your buddy again have you has anybody here listened to an anchor podcast because mm-hmm. i feel like this is a thing that Everybody is able to do, but I don't know who's seeking the content. Apparently, somebody is if this thing is is doing it, or is there just a bunch of people throwing content that nobody's listening to? Dude, I barely listen to the co- podcast that my friends do. Right? Yeah, I know, right? And they're I, super same well done. Problem, they're, same problem. Be, they're really well done. Yeah. Right? But you run out of time, right? And it's like, if, you're, I'm, if I'm going to go exploring, I'm going to explore for content. Yeah. Like something specific that suits like a hole in my, you know, consumption diet. Right, like, oh, I need to go find a podcast about X. Right? Okay, yeah. maybe, maybe. And and I don't think we're the audience for this, too. I mean, we're I'm hoping not. We, we're we're all content creators. We all have our own ecosystems of uh, networks we belong to, friends, podcasts we're trying to hit, or, or even you know, we're consuming what we're consuming already, and there's not much room for more stuff. Yeah, yeah, so. and and honestly, again, I mean, you guys. Look at how much work you put into doing your show. Mm-hmm. I know how much work we put in over at my show, mm-hmm. right? To mm-hmm. make it sound right. Absolutely. No, I do not want, and I said this to Katie before we got started, I was like, I don't think there's any first round draft picks in that that anchor pool of co- of talent. I no, just, but I, I think there is a place too for like uh, uh, people that are coming together to figure this thing out from scratch too. So, I, which I think this is this is really aimed at, right? Or discourage I, I, people. Or discourage, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you know, what are you going to get from that? Uh, Chilla, do you have something you want to say? Yeah, I was going to say. I feel like it's the the starter kit, right? Right. If exactly. If you, this if is the blog talk a, radio. If you don't, if you don't have a friend or know someone that shares a a, a passion or a common interest, that it's something that you're really interested in. I think this is the perfect place to. To I mean, if you can't find them on Twitter or something else. It, you could find those people that want to get out there and get to talk about the same type of topics. And if it's, if it's niche enough or if enough people have interest in it, they're going to start following you. And they're, I mean, it doesn't have to be a whole hour long podcast. It can be 15 minute blips. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I still find podcasts that based on a very specific topic I'm looking at that I, I start listening to because it's something I'm interested in, in at the moment. And I'll, I mean, to be honest with you, yes, other podcasts suffer and I, I stop listening and maybe I pick them back up later when, when that need is over. But I, I feel like there's, there's always room for more podcasts. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking on their Twitter uh, and essentially they have like a top 10 of the best of the week. And, and here's some of their podcasts they have on there. Uh, there's a, a, D- a Dungeons and Dragons comedy show. Okay. Um, independent interview show featuring cool creatives. Uh, something about their body. Uh, Char, I can't even. I never say her name right. Charlize Theron, Theron Nation, Theronathon, where they're watching and reviewing every one of her movies. <laughs> oh. Hidden Mickey's at Disney World. Ask a manager about office ethics, and podcast like sleep with me i'm not sure what that one is but it's got sheep on it so it looks safe <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> looks safe vernacular the art of being human i mean there's all kinds of podcasts over wow here. yeah so again it might be just a little bit of a self but again i go to like everybody's making these on their phone so how could the dick like you can get mics for your phone so basically sure. you've got like the tinder of podcast hosts Ooh. producing mm. like like the cheapest fastest you know, fried blurch final product you can get your hands on. I'm sure it's going to turn out great. Swipe right. Hmm? Swipe right toast. I'm sure it's going to turn out great. <laughs> this this definitely does not end in tears. Anyway. Oh, boy. Uh, Scott, what do you got uh, for your awesome thing of the week? Okay. So, I mean, you got to go Hardware Cup, right? You know? mm-hmm. like Hardware Cup here in Pittsburgh. International finals are tomorrow, actually. Um. Brad Cryle from uh, Velocity Robotics will be uh, representing this region. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys don't know about Brad, Brad's an easy person to get behind. Mm-hmm. You know? And and he made this cool thing. It's a, uh, they call it a miter saw fence. It actually goes on your miter saw and it makes it so that your uh, miter saw cuts exactly the right cut, like to precision from a Bluetooth device. Ooh, isn't that cool? Um, so, uh, 
Do you have the, what do you call it? Uh, d- 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 yeah, we got the video playing now. You'll see it on the Facebook in a moment. Well, so I may have, I may have dipped into Twitter for a moment. You may have dipped into Twitter. <laughs> well, it, in my defense, I did it to scold people who weren't here yet. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It, so it's a, it, it, so that there is the, the, uh, data pro, mm-hmm. which is the, uh, that's Brad in the video. So the data pro is the, uh, Bluetooth, what do you call it? Measuring tape that actually sends information to uh, AutoSet, which so, is the Velocity Robotics product that Brad is pitching. Okay. So he's here. He's local. He won the the regional, and he's represented tomorrow in the Hardware Cup, which is they call it the International Finals. There's people from all over the world coming. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, this thing here, this uh, what do you call it? Uh, video that you know they're showing is just one of the ways that you can put measurements in and then the robot basically gets it down to like this ridiculous amount of precision it's useful as opposed to some of the stuff i see yeah yeah it's not another app that does something it's not another uh uh, you know you know device that doesn't really solve a problem right yeah and and that's actually kind of what i think a lot of people take away from this was that it was um it was something for real people to actually like get some of that productivity multiplier type of thinking into their life Mm -hmm. because everything was like well you know uh you know, do you own a multinational string of corporations and need to have a better way to pull your expenses together? Like they were always these weird apps that would get, you know, these unicorn spotlights and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And here's a guy who's like, look, I can save you, you know, enough money that this, my tool pays for itself in like five weeks. Yeah. 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 Sign me up. Just on accuracy. Yeah. Excellent. So and it is on Kickstarter for the uh, the Daddy Pro Data Pro twenty five. Yeah, that's that's like a complimentary product yeah. that works with it. But Brad, you know, I mean, he's got to work with those people, mm-hmm. right? I just thought it was cool that they make those tools where you can send them the measurements over. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you know, again, you know, your phone's Bluetooth too. So if you just want to like pull measurements into your phone, right, or send measurements from your phone to the saw, right, like all this stuff is starting to make more sense than just writing it down on a piece of paper and like carrying it or doing what I do, which is just repeat it to yourself over and over. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget, like, I always forget the uh, the measurements of posters that go get frames, for instance. <laughs> been, and yeah, I have to say it over and over again. Yeah. It's my friend's phone number today. I was re- trying to remember it. And it was 5473, 5473. I get down, I write it down. I wrote it down with the middle two numbers transposed. And <laughs> the person I gave it to is like, some lady's mad at me because I've been texting her all <laughs> afternoon. Thanks to you not writing stuff down. Uh, you know, so yeah. Just really, I love the fact that Hardware Cup is in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Like it's local. I don't know that everybody's as, as proud of it maybe as they should be. You know, I'm not sure everybody knows about it. Let's start there. No, yeah, because it, it's it's the thing that comes up like once a year. I'm like, hey, is. this is a thing. We should check it out. And it's just it ne- it never comes around. You know, or or, or it's in it, right on top of something else I'm doing. So I haven't been able to personally check it out. Oh, either, and it's so. an interesting little community of people who are developing these startups that are mm-hmm. based on tangible goods, right? And this is not just like I know Alpha Labs involved in it, but it's not, it's not just, just Alpha them, Lab right. people, right? And I, I saw IEEE. See, I'm I'm a little bit weak on exactly yeah. who backs hardware cup i know i saw ieee is in some way like maybe sponsoring it mm. I, I don't know what that's about um, and that's again, a government ent- entity is right the international electrical engineers i forget exactly yeah. what it's called but ieee writes all the specs like you know so when when they came out with firewire it was ieee what 1394 right mm-hmm. why do i know that because i apparently don't have to write down numbers sometimes anyway <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Firewire was 1394, and that's just every, what everybody called it. And, right. and they kind of are the standards-making body for that whole yeah, universe. And, and I'm, I'm seeing a few names on the sponsor list that I know from uh, from my uh, SAE work, too. The SolidWorks and Bosch, of course. Um, Bosch usually has a lot of cool gadgets when I go to Michigan, for instance. Bosch is a really so, cool company. Mm-hmm. Bosch, I don't know if you know this, is owned by like like 90% of Bosch is actually nonprofit charity. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because they're always showing off a lot of gadgetry. They had like AR stuff uh, in the middle of uh, Michigan Speedway, um, yeah. and, uh, and we'll be going out to, to do that again uh, in a, just a few weeks here, uh, I think. So it would be cool to see what like it's it's the most like like sponsored setup thing out of all the events I do with SIE. Over ninety so. percent of Bosch is owned by the Robert Bosch Foundation, mm-hmm. which, if I'm not mistaken, is a children's charity. I can't remember exactly what it is. I didn't believe it either. Look it up. Hmm. I, I wikied it and I like I can't remember the the precise number, but 
honestly, I bought a lot of stuff from Bush since I found that out mm -hmm. just because of it, you know. Awesome. Hey, well, my awesome thing of the week is for somebody that we have not had a lot of awesome things to say about uh, recently. But uh, uh, I actually got past this by uh, Matt Carlin's. I think he got a press release over there at KDK and he thought it'd be something that um, I, I can check out here. So um, Uber released Uber Movement. So this is something they're putting together. Again, they're getting all that great data from between their AI cars and just uh, all of us using the apps, whether you know, the drivers or the, or the riders, right? And uh, now you can use that to kind of figure out uh, kind of travel times around a city, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me get in here. Like, like the, the one example that they gave um, talked about how when the, um, oh no, it's going to make me, it's going to make me log in again. So I'm going to take a moment here. But, but one of the examples that they gave was about like DC when the Metro got shut down. And you can see like from a certain point, like if I put a pin right here in beach view, it would give you kind of a heat map of, you know, how long does it take to drive to, you know, Squirrel Hill to, you know, Monroeville, things like that. And it's really, it's really fascinating to look at. I'm getting a verification code now. Thank you. Thank you, Uber. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, like, and so again, the example was like, you know, hey, the Metro shut down. So now everybody's finding alternate methods. So what, you know, what what does that do to traffic patterns? What does that do to these neighborhoods and everything like that, right? Uh, and, you know, Colin Keller coded like here. We put a pin here on the North Shore, and you're seeing uh, as you go out, there's a little bit of a uh, a key here, and you can see that it takes about oh, let's say about uh, 20 minutes to go from like the North Shore to uh, what is that like like Mill Bomb Boulevard, -y, uh, uh, it, you know, Oakland kind of area over here, right? Uh, in just kind of an interesting, you know, data that can be used for transit, for for kind of understanding the the, the you know the the traffic flows and everything like that. Um, it, yeah, here <laughs> if you want to go here, it's like sixteen minutes. Like here, we, we can put our um, original pin. Nope, nope, nope. As I'm doing this on the fly, but this is a really cool thing. <laughs> All I heard was just a completely like void of all context nope I, it's, everything seemed like it was fine except for your narration um but no but it, it it is kind of interesting to see um how that how that works and you can actually so you can actually like look at dates and times like rush hour times versus non rush hour times what does a saturday morning look like what does a sunday morning look like with mm -hmm. church around or something right yeah. what what happens during the st patrick's day parade or during a penguins game you know for travel times um and again just another tool to kind of um you know uh, uh, study those things you know as we're we're talking about like you know uh, smart grids and everything like that or you know just had a conversation today with public source uh, helping them stream, uh, talking to the Port Authority uh, new CEO, and they're talking about understanding those patterns and everything to figure, you know, you know, to to, you know, make the 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 bus transit system better. And this is just one of those things. So again, you know, Uber kind of finally paying off on that. You know, hey, we're going to actually give you tools with all this data you're letting us do. Um, um, here that they uh, have Boston, Toronto, San Francisco, Washington D.C., and Cincinnati here in North America, and they have other cities, uh, including uh, Paris, London, Amsterdam, Africa, South Asia, so in New Zealand and Australia. So they have a few, you know, big towns in there uh, represented. So a pretty cool tool uh, that I'm sure uh, a few cities are going to be using for their stuff. So, uh, Chilla, what's your awesome thing? So, oh, where'd my my browser window disappeared. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> My awesome thing is uh, Google has started. I think we covered their release of they were kind of doing an AI kit in the past that was kind of positioned at, you know, your 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 younger generations, probably your eight to, to 12 year old. But those old kits came at an extremely cheap price, um, but required you to procure other devices like SD cards and Raspberry Pi zeros and, and whatnot. They kind of came with a box and some, some small pieces. Um, they've now updated, they have a vision kit and a voice kit that leverages um, Google AI and it, it allows you to use a companion Android app to help you get the kit set up. Um, and the kits range, the vision, vision one is, excuse me, 90 bucks and the voice one's 50 bucks. Um, a little more, like I said, expensive, but pretty realistic based on what's in the box mm -hmm. and kind of gets you 
on the road to starting with AI and these kind of build it yourself kits. This reminded me of the the cardboard kit that Nintendo had, or that we have the little the little bits R two D two kit um, that comes in at kind of the hundred dollar price point. So um, thought it was a cool thing to get those builders uh, people that are interested in building started. Um, and, and it was it, it's nice that they kind of have an Android app and and tools and utilities online for for people to use to build out the devices. Did you mention there's a Raspberry Pro Zero in there? Yeah, Raspberry sorry. Pi. Sorry, yeah, Raspberry Pi Zero. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's pretty cool because I haven't seen anything that integrated those with like a, like an app or something. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> and they're nice little cardboard devices that you can. Uh, I love this picture here, by the way. They're nice little cardboard devices that you can play right along with your uh, uh, Nintendo Switch. Uh, <laughs> new toys that we talked about that are supposed to be coming out actually this friday on 420 uh so smoke them and build some cardboard things i'm surprised that even with these you know people aren't the, the cardboard is the easy piece you look at all kinds of cool stuff that people have done with raspberry pi um boards and the cases for them making them look like nintendos and integrating mm-hmm. them into all kinds of different devices um I'm I'm sure it's not going to be too long till we see people 3D printing all kinds of cool configurations for for this type of device. In the meantime, there's this curious picture of a woman uh, holding up the 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 uh, vision, which is, just looks like a brown cardboard box that she's holding up to a apple. <laughs> That's supposedly giving her this information um, uh, about uh, uh, you know that is an edible Fuji f- apple fruit. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, but so, so maybe some of those, uh, upgrades to make it more visually interesting could be good for that. So, um, cool. Uh, yeah. I like seeing these kits kind of come out here. So, um, my awesome thing of the week. No, I already said my thing. It is time for an awesome ad of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Slice on Broadway. There yes, it is. Yes. Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, these guys, these guys won great delivery we'll talk about delivery problems in a little bit here uh but uh supporting again supporting the shows and helping our guests here that come in during the dinner time and late evenings uh for uh, our tuesday podcast for a good long time uh but you can check them out they're right here the og original location right down the road on in beachview on broadway avenue hence the name guys uh as well as our other locations at carnegie pa uh, down on Main Street, as well as PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and their newest location in the East End, East Liberty. It depends on how new you are to Pittsburgh, uh, where uh, you can uh, check them out there as well. Uh, some of my favorite pizza here in town. They have delivery. They're all over the place. Pick it up while you're uh, 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 checking out a, a Pirates game, which will, again, I think they're still doing well, aren't they? I don't. I don't follow the sports ball. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just, uh, the people on me Twitter. And the, me and the Buckos have been divorced for 20 oh, yeah, years. You have We're been, not talking about this. You have been. No. But you have a But I'm so painfully but, divorced from the Pirates. But you have you have a reason to go to that ballpark now. That has nothing to do with the team that shall not be named. Is Slice on Broadway on the exterior wall? Yes, they set? are. Then absolutely. Just the first thing you see when you cross that bridge. Okay. As long as it's on the exterior wall. It's happening. How reasonably sure can we be that the Nuttings don't take any of that money? What? The, what? <laughs> I don't want the Nuttings to take any of that money. I, slices? Yeah. I I think I think Slice is going to be okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I prefer to go Slice here if it's all the same to you. Yeah? Yeah. That's fine. Wherever you are, go check them out. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. PJ's underscore Slice on the Twitter. And of course, Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram as well. Thank you to those guys for supporting the show. All right, we're going to uh, take that uh, uh, to a little bit of a retraction from last week. We uh, talked about DoorDash. And, uh, you know, it's another it's another Grubhub. It's another Uber Eats. It's another Postmates, right? Um, well, I used it. And, it <laughs> <laughs> and here's the difference. Those work. Um, uh, so so this is the less than awesome part. But, uh, but no, we, we did try it. We just, you know, wanted to give it a shot just to kind of report back, right? You know, uh, there was a good experience. Somebody got lunch here in the office, actually. And, you know, from over in Mount Lebanon, it worked fine. We get, we're like, well, let's grab some food. You know, Raw's on. Uh, it's right up the road. Let's support a local business and, and, and try, the, try it out. They didn't show up. Nobody showed up to pick up the order. The place was closing. And then, and then said, well, you know, I, I'll give it to you for 10 bucks." And I'm like, sir, I already paid for it. 
So, um, so, so it's kind of the big. So, they didn't pick it up from the restaurant or come to you. No. Well, that is that is a new spin on delivery. <laughs> exactly, and apparently, and there was another. I, I got tagged in another post because I went on the the Beachview uh, Facebook uh, group and said, "Hey guys, don't use this." You know, especially for places that already have delivery, they already have their own delivery, uh, like like Big Shot Bob's. But uh, you know, it, it's 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 brand new. Maybe they're working on some kinks, but that's that's not good for them because if if uh, you know they've gone and got the order in, made you know made the food, and if that doesn't get delivered and sits there, then that's the, that's something that the the store is out too, um, and then nobody works out. So did you talk to anybody after? Um, we were, there was an email <laughs> exchange <laughs> that they said that the, uh, we sent out an email and the Twitter got back to us and said to the text, the helpline, uh, on, on Twitter. And, uh, that somebody would be back to us uh, within 48 hours. Uh, this morning I had messages on both lines mm-hmm. and, uh, it will take me a couple of days to get my refund back. For 48 hours, your food's going to be a little cold. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't take you care of dinner on Monday night. What surprises me as the shop owner, uh, I'm surprised that they're willing to process the order without some kind of payment. Well, the thing is, they receive it. Yeah. They receive it. And I don't know if they identify as DoorDash when they call, right? Um, because because usually these services, uh, from my day what that I did Postmates, trying that out, um, as a, as a driver, um, there is like, there's like, there's a bank of people that just call and place these orders. Right. And mm-hmm. you show up with a credit card, like you, uh, you know, like a Postmates credit card and you just swipe that because you, you're just a, like anybody else picking up an item right now. But then when you do something like that, like, you know, this venue is like, well, now they're, this has given us a bad name because they're not delivering the food in the meantime. And then creates a customer service uh, nightmare. Um, there's a whole other company that uh, uh, restaurant that decided, you know, that, 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 that had a big post on, I got tagged in and said that this had been happening to them too in this first week or so. Um, I actually stumbled on before I knew that they were coming here. Uh, this same company had a problem with an in out burger. The in out burger was stopping them from picking up orders from their place. Uh, and, on and the West this Coast. is such a tight place to try to, to try to win any business too. Right. Yeah. With so much in town. Well, just, I mean, in, in any major city, right? Mm-hmm. Eat 24. Uh, I was using, uh, they're owned by Yelp now, but back in the day, they were like 10 minutes late. And I think I got my lunch free, mm-hmm. right? And that's before Uber even got into the game, right? right? I have to believe it's harder, not easier now to stay alive. Yeah, because now, now you're going up with them who have, you know, nearly unlimited funds because they got all this stuff going on. Yeah. They got money to put together AI cars. I think they're going to. Uh, have d- not even sweat that they uh, well, well, <laughs> are doing eats. Well, those are a lease. Those are those are all leased. The, the the cars are leased. Yeah, it's it's they're not as rich as you think. Oh, okay, I got you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> well, and there's also the the, the deal with uh, uh, with McDonald's and everything, so it's not like that's a straight up spend or anything at that point too. Um, so uh, yeah, so I would not recommend it. I mean, you know, for science, we tried it. And, uh, you know, I definitely caution anybody on something like that. You know, supposedly I'm getting my money back, but I, I don't want to put, you know, some good local businesses I- I- into that. So, well, and that's where I feel like you, we, we, we commented that it was, a, it's a hard, hard area to get into. I mean, if I was, if I wanted to go after this, I would create my company where we handle the payment up front. So, and that's where I'm surprised that for the shop owners that are, that are doing this, I'm surprised they're not requiring the payment to be made as the as the order is put in. I mean, I usually use a, a debit card to, to pay for pizza or, or any kind of ordering I'm doing, even when I have the shop deliver it. Why aren't they making, why aren't the shop owners saying, look, we're, we're going to allow you to to deliver our food as your service, but you're going to pay up front. And if you don't get here, then they're not out the money. Right, right. And if it, for you, you know, if you wanted to go pick up that food, at least you're not stuck paying for it twice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I mean, it just seems like it just seems like a, a someone didn't think through the entire experience 
or are they just not getting good drivers here? Because it's probably one of those things where they have the app, they they receive the request, and then you know it's a it's a longer it's a longer um, process that, and that's why I didn't do the deliveries um, after trying for a day because it's a longer process. You spend like forty to forty five minutes between waiting for it to prepare, going to pick it up, and then delivering to the place. Um, I did two orders. One was a, a, a um, Buffalo Wild Wings in Monroeville to somewhere in the middle of the city, and then Cheesecake Factory to Etna, south side to Etna. Mm-hmm. You know, for like a couple of bucks each. Like it's not worth it at that point. But to to John's point, right? Like I guarantee you, they they modeled this exactly the way uh, credit card companies used to do it, right? Because mm-hmm. the whole idea back then was like, oh, why would I give someone credit, right? And this. This business, you know, basically grew up and ate the world. Um, <laughs> but uh, the number of uh, transactions that go bad, right, is small, and they can quantify it. Mm-hmm. And the amount of extra money you make from accepting this thing is large. So they say, look, here's our terms and conditions. They're not up for negotiation. But if you sign on the dotted line, you're going to get 25% more sales. And of those 25%, one percent is going to be bad because our driver is a doofus. You're talking about for the restaurant? Yeah. Well, there's a problem. They're not asking the restaurants for permission. Mm-hmm. All right. That's that's the problem. Like the, the post that I saw says, hey, we're listed on the site. We did not ask to be there. We did not ask to be a part of this versus Grubhub, something you sign up for. But I'll bet you in other towns where they're more mature. Yeah. They started playing the game where it's like, well, you know, ABC Pizza is... Mm-hmm. I mean, Pittsburgh, they're brand new. So it's almost like, it's almost not fair to judge at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, Not to take anything away from the very sensitive topic that we're discussing. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But um, yeah, I guarantee that once they get known in a place, and while we were sitting here, I actually looked up the glass door reviews, Mm -hmm. which is like, that's a key for me. If I think that a a place is, you know, used to ripping people off, the first thing I look at is glass door to see whether or not somebody Mm -hmm. inside is screaming, you know, this is immoral and this isn't how I was raised. Yeah. But it actually has a lot of really good reviews. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It just doesn't work yet in Pittsburgh. It might you be a little too got early. got a loser that time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, let's have some positive food-related uh, stories. I actually brought this up over at the awesome thing of the month for uh, River's Edge. But uh, you guys remember Viewmasters, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, I missed them. You missed them. You missed them. I mean, I had my old, like... You know, Masters of the Universe, uh, uh, you know, card, and, and, and it's 3D, and you click the thing, and there's a few scenes and everything, and and, and you kind of, you know, re- you read through a story book sort of situation. Well, Smallman Galley, which is a cool place, is kind of a startup eatery. I, I don't know if I'm doing that justice, Scott, uh, to the kind of venue it is. I love the galley like nothing in this it's world. Just a, it's a bunch <laughs> of new chefs, and, they, and they, there's, they, they have... It's an incubator. Yeah. It's basically like, hey, you seem like you might have a future. Why don't you crash at our place and see whether or not your menu works? Yeah. So you just work it. You just, you can roll in there, try out some new stuff. Well, they're going to have these interesting guilty pleasures, um, um, uh, kind of offerings, but you know, other than that, other than having a drink called the, the land party, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, they're actually going to have their drink menu on Viewmasters, specially designed, uh, Viewmasters there. Uh, it, so like, so you get your cocktail in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Old school 3D a little bit. So That's really awesome. Um, yeah, I think this is, this is great. I mean, think of how the ease of changing it out and, and adding and, and whatnot. I, I think it's a great idea. I wonder how long it takes to process that, right? They're just small. They're just small negatives, aren't they? Yeah, for the most part. But they have to be like so, you know... Is this where those 3D um, um, pictures, uh, cameras come in handy? Oh, they kind of makes like a weird, uh, like there's overlap or something yeah, like that. Yeah, because you have to have that 3D effect that makes that look like a cardboard cutout popping out at you of He-Man. They, they, they probably just did something and modified a dual camera off the back of some cell phone. Probably. It, it was probably, <laughs> it's probably a lot easier for them to do these days than it was in the 1980s when we all or, experienced or- these things. Yeah, or like the th- remember the early 360 rigs where they had all the GoPros around, mm-hmm. a- a- around a ring. You can still get those. Just, you, can, you can still get those if you. I mean, it's still kind of the high way, high end way to do it. So, uh, and our friend Laura actually uh, shared with us a uh, a uh, 
there was it's it's a video of uh, them doing an A/B testing on a an Apple HomePod versus an Amazon Echo, asking <laughs> asking for metal bands, right? Uh, you know, play so and so, play some Slayer, for instance, as showing in this first mm-hmm. example. Uh, but in the end, and I, I can't really kick the music on for you. And it was it was pretty good. It was five out of five until um, or until we got the Dimu Borger. Am I even saying it right? No. Dimu Borger said the metal fans out there are really cringing at this. Uh, Amazon just straight wouldn't wouldn't fight it. Uh, uh, Siri played. I've had the time of my life by Bill Medley and Jennifer Warnes. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that was a fun one that got shared uh, over on the Awesome Cast group. And please follow the Awesome Cast group. Contribute to uh, stories. We use a lot of them here uh, on the show as well. So hey, I want to give a shout out to our friend uh, putting together a puzzle of design and media from branding to print to digital projects. Alex Cars, Alex Cars Designs, our friend out there on the West Coast. I got to hang out with him a couple of weeks ago when I was visiting L.A. for some work. Uh, 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 and we got to watch some wrestling together. Uh, but he's done a lot of work with us, some websites, some uh, T-shirt designs. Uh, he's, uh, uh, you know, he even does photo and video projects as well. Uh, that's Alex, Alexander Cars, K-A-H-R-S uh, dot com or Alex Cars dot media. Uh, again, he's doing a lot of really cool stuff out there and uh, uh, doing a lot of fun projects. I was talking about some of the projects that he has coming up. He's been doing a lot of t-shirt work, DVD art uh, for a lot of professional wrestling uh, uh, stuff out there, uh, but really kind of spreading that around as well. Uh, so there's a, a cool Kikio shirt. She's actually going to be in town here in a couple of weeks for some wrestling shows. So thank you so much to our friend Alexander Cars, alexandercars.com and alexcars.media. Uh, putting together some fun stuff. Oh, there's a testimonial from me on his front page. I just found out. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> uh, but no, thank you so much. He's a, a, a longtime follower of, of a few of the podcasts here on Sorgatron Media, and uh, we're glad to help get the word out for him as well for you guys. So, Dutters, um, what is Snap doing? By the way, I got a side thing. I found Snap Spectacles in the, um, you know, the overpriced technology yeah, yeah. store that, that's in a in a, like an LAX or something. Yeah. It was just there on a shelf. It's weird not seeing it in the odd vending machine for yeah, a change. Yeah, that's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> oh, still not dropping $130 no, on that thing. No, 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 thank you. So Snap launches uh, new features for Lens Studio. Lens Studio is essentially a way for you to create AR lenses for Snapchat. So they give you some new templates, including like face paint, which focuses on face substitution, photo, must like face paint, overlay a lens. Your favorite hot dog is, is displayed, of course, yes. on this article. Like a 2D, 3D objects, like hot dog guy, uh, baseball cap, um, kind of that kind of fun things. So you can go in there and create your own lenses. And then there are going to be community lenses. And they're just trying to get third party developers and creators in there. So it's not just So them. has everything been in-house up until now? It looks like it. Which is wild, or at least like I know, I know there was like a a, a, a WWE WrestleMania uh, Snapchat lens that was uh, mm-hmm. popping up for a little bit there, uh, what a week ago, I guess. So like, other than like sponsored things or whoever made the hot dog in house, yes. uh, like and, like so like we can make little uh, awesome cast uh, lenses or something yeah. now. Yeah, we could case? be like little faces that go over our faces or ball caps that say awesome cast. So what is the um? What's the investment? Is this are they are they charging for the software or they just kind of want people to get stuff in there at this point or, or they're probably charging for a, for you to make them available at that point like kind of like they do for the um geo filters right meet the creators now i'm on the website where's the thing <laughs> hello because there's gotta be somewhere there has to be somewhere, so somewhere in there they're, they're making money, money at these guys fancy so. cat oh my gosh there's all kinds of lenses in here <laughs> 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 gotta go guys bye um no, I don't know. I'm not seeing it anywhere. It's me again. <laughs> Sorry about you that. You just said that a second ago. Ah, this is scary. Just fixing the feed up here. Um, Build but. your experience, publish and promote. And it really doesn't say anything about them making any sort of money on this. I'm really confused because like you said, there should be some place for them to make money. Probably, probably probably when you get to hit that export you have to put your credit card in <laughs> yeah but there's a bunch on here like if you go to uh lens studio lens studio dot snapchat dot com uh they have a whole bunch of different lenses on there essentially you send them to your friends with your snap code and then you can get a bunch more this is wild i didn't realize this was even a thing 
<laughs> so some scare house lenses coming soon. Maybe. Maybe some zombies Ooh, for Halloween season. That'd be so creepy. <laughs> Clowns. Awesome. Um, and uh, had a few other uh, um, stories here real quick. Um, Chillo, uh, tell, me, tell me about the cyber warfare story you got in here. So, so, yeah, so, so there's there's a yearly conference. It's a, it's a security conference. And last year at the, the RSA um uh, security con- conference, the, the a group came up with this idea of like a digital Jiva convention um, that that these companies would work together um, to protect civilians from state state sponsored hacking. Uh, one of the things that they came up with uh, at this year's conference was kind of signing an agreement that would state that they would not help governments build uh, cyber weapons. Um, the, the the quote in the article is we're living amidst a generation of new weapons where cyberspace has become the new battlefield. Um, I was, I thought it was interesting the number of companies that signed it. Um, Microsoft and Facebook were, were the two most notable. I'm sure Facebook's doing everything they can to, to get the good side of press. I noticed a lot of, na- I, I noticed a lot of new privacy notices every time I logged in, uh, or during the week last week around those, uh, those, uh, uh, Congress discussions. Mm-hmm. It, it was. It, I thought it was interesting too. Cisco, Juniper Networks, Oracle, which is a it's a, a big name across more than just databases. Um, SAP, Semantic, FireEye, Trend Micro, and a number of those companies. The thing that surprised me um, was Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, and Twitter did not sign the pledge. Um, so we'll interested. Maybe they'll come late to the table, but they're not pledging and i know alphabet's been in the news for potentially working with the government mm-hmm. for certain ai um uh, type type initiatives with the government which I'm, I'm hoping that we see some some transparency around what they're actually doing there um but i just thought this was interesting and i'm glad to see companies stepping up hopefully facebook had planned to do this before their little snafus but it, but it's good to see um who ended up on this list and i do have some concerns about who didn't you know there's been some interesting fallout from from a lot of this privacy uh conversation especially in this last week um there was an app i believe it was bumble that i saw the story on that i think we talked about on here and it's a uh bumble is a i think it's a networking app um, it's a dating app. We're not just for dating anymore. They well, say though, friends and dating. Friends for friendships and and uh, I guess podcast partners if you want as well. Uh, you know. Uh, so so like apps like that are coming out and saying we have because a lot of these apps you'd get them and they would almost require a Facebook login because it mm-hmm. was the easiest way to do things. Mm-hmm. But now mm-hmm. since so many people are kind of like, mm, what am I giving up here with with the Facebook login? They're like, hey, now we have a non Facebook. It's not required. Which is now a feature, I guess, too. You know, as as we'll, we'll make your life more di- difficult by by requiring additional authentication. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Because because this small company's authenticator is definitely going to be more secure than Facebook's, right? Well, aren't they using? Aren't they tying to the cell phone number or something? A lot of them do. Like I just had to do with Uber, right? Uh, to log into that website uh, because you need an account. That was one of the other things where Car- Carlin's k- kicked me. Uh, the story because he didn't have an uber account to even look at the information so i guess I, another way of saying this is that it's a choice between um understaffed and sort of willfully malicious those are our two choices on the authenticator <laughs> <laughs> or or uh this there's the facebook does god knows what with your data but this company that's completely going to get bought by somebody else that's going to do god knows what with your data yeah. and password and everything right because you don't know what's going to go i mean there's something in that terms of service i was like yeah if this company gets sold you know this data is going with it right absolutely and all the rules change it gets then, bought by facebook anyways and <laughs> and in the one hand washes the other yeah and, exactly and, and well, i, I always have fear of like what happens if something happens to my phone number like say there's something that makes me want to get rid of my phone number or change phone numbers or right. my phone. I'm, I'm away on vacation and and this is why I, ac- I actually take a second phone and refuse to go to any carrier that doesn't give me sim card portability to another device because mm-hmm. there's things where i have to accept a text message to log in or i have to and and it's all tied to my phone number i mean 
what happens when people start somehow getting access to text logs or, I mean, a lot of that stuff's in text is people will just find another avenue to get at the data to then mimic somebody else. I, I don't know. It's just a big game of cat and mouse. That data is already out there as it is though. Right. I mean, uh, you guys remember a few years ago, the New York times actually posted all the text logs from nine 11. Really? Yeah. You got to check that out. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, one of our problems is we have such a short memory. Right. And that's not a shot at you. It's just a statement. I mean, it's just, you know, like we forget mm -hmm. like what yeah. the headline was and how impactful it was. And you get in, inundated with this stuff and it's like, you know, you can't even put out a fire all the way. You just make it so it doesn't completely burn your house down. That's that's the mode we've been in. You know, uh, so I, I can't remember when this came out. I'm going to say 10 years ago where they basically did a data dump from all the towers. And they're like, yeah, these are the. These are the tech because messages. it's not encrypted. When you SMS, it's not encrypted. I mean, there was a discussion. There was a discussion um, um, last week about you know WhatsApp. You know, are you guys looking at me talking about Black <laughs> Panther, right? And WhatsApp, and when I'm emailing you on WhatsApp, right? And it's that like was no, easily the cringiest thing I've. Ever oh, it was. Watched. Oh yeah, when, <laughs> and we said three times emailing somebody in WhatsApp. I'm like, oh, stop now. But the problem is, he asked about WhatsApp. He didn't ask about Messenger. Well, I, I which wrote is my home. absolutely doing it. I'm going to yeah. deviate from the from the narrative for just one moment, and that's this, right? I love how he's afraid people are going to find out that he was watching Black Panther, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like you just you write what story suits you. I'll write the story that I think. Oh, let's roll back to the source of this one. I'm just we're like people don't know that I watch that black guy movie, do they? Yeah. Because I am, after all, you know, a long-standing gray powdered wig senator up here, and well, I've got a reputation. I just I was like, you couldn't come up with anything better on the fly than you're afraid people are going to find out you watched a Black Panther movie. Yeah, That's a yeah. terrible example. Yeah, uh, but back on target. Yeah, I think you should. I I honestly think you should be ready for a future where your past texts come back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's a thing. I think we're all just not there's, aware. There's, not aware of the exact date. I've been having a lot of conversations with people in certain industries that say, "Hey, yeah, if you have something you want to discuss, do not do it in writing. You know, or, you know, whether it be Freedom of Information Acts or anything like that. You know, like or it can be found and hacked. Sony." You know, as a whole, uh, when they got hacked a few years ago, and they basically destroyed their reputation for like everything. Um, but Sony movies, I think, particularly. You know, it was like Sony that. movies. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, was a, yeah. it was a disaster. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, I mean, that's and I think that 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 goes with anything. Like again, if you don't want it out there, don't put it in a digital form. Yeah, that goes for everything. You know, so that's a big tip for that. But you know, I mean, just to just to kind of finish off on the, on on the Congress piece of this, though, you know, I mean, like these are the people that are writing the rules around this stuff. <laughs> you know, not to it's put too scary. Yeah, not to put too fine a point on it, but that just shouldn't be like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I, that's a whole other episode here, and I think we're <laughs> running low on time. And I promise Brian, I will stay under an hour for so they can keep us over there at uh, River's Edge. So. <laughs> uh but anyways uh, speaking of which and uh we're gonna have a few friends here and uh on some of the shows here in the coming weeks i want to give a shout out to our friends at millvale music festival actually our, our sister company psychic media service is going to be sponsoring a stage over there i can't wait to see that i know there was a lot of things with saxophones on our stage last year because i got to uh tune into that stream while uh in the middle of a field in i don't know kansas or something last year uh because <laughs> i don't end up working on top of this but you should not miss it out miss out on it uh millvale music fest is, was last year's groundbreaking thing it, it is the biggest show off for millvale if you're here in the city um it's a, like across the river from lawrenceville it's not a, it's not a venture out for you guys and and this is the area that everybody's talking about there's a bunch of breweries if you haven't had a chance to check them out food trucks the new art gallery we actually posted on the awesome chat last week with mike zikafus fellow ninja turtles fan um you'll, you'll see if you watch the video uh but <laughs> uh, about the new art gallery um i'm sorry art alley and uh, so, you know, a lot going on there. This year, um, they're adding that space, and uh, you can hit up details, and including, uh, I believe, weekly updates on information and band announcements and schedules at millvalemusic.org. And producer Missy is going to correct or add additional information about that because she's on the uh, committee for that. Yeah, just, just 
Well, let me turn on your mic. Yeah, so you can you distribute off. the information. Um, yeah. It's, it's roomy over there. So, some really cool updates on all of this. Uh, mm-hmm. They actually have a Milvo Music Minute, which is our update thing happening at the same time that we're doing this. So they're, they're making some additional announcements. Looking for volunteers. So if you want to go check out the music festival, get a nice t-shirt for the day and pretty much get to brag about the fact that you, you got to help out with the event, uh, head on over to the Milvo Music Festival website at milvomusic.org. Volunteers, and volunteers, volunteer. volunteers. I will yes. put that out there. I, I got to volunteer for a replay FX last year and it was the coolest experience because if you dig music, if you dig the music scene uh, and want to be a little closer to it, this is a great opportunity for that. Like I wanted to be closer to the video game classic scene going on um i got to be part of that at, at that kind of event uh definitely recommend uh you guys uh volunteering and becoming a part of that as well and i'm gonna put katie on oh on, <laughs> uh, on the hot seat over here oh. on blast because <laughs> she's actually as part of the scare house podcast as part of the scare house and the circuit media network an awesome cast i feel like awesome i should cast. have like, yes. all the things on my shirt she will have all the things she's gonna be one of the stage hosts oh yeah. Watch me screw up band names. <laughs> well, hopefully you What's don't. What's your band name? Hopefully Doesn't they don't give you the metal stage with those interesting names, right? Umlauts. <laughs> lots and lots of umlauts. Now taking the stage, umlaut town. Don't try to steal that. That's going to be my band name. Lots and lots of umlauts. <laughs> is that Dots your? And is, is that your Rammstein cover band? Once I find some time for that, yeah, 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 yeah. we'll squeeze that in. Okay. <laughs> On your multiple, multiple, multiple projects. Uh, but no, check it out. It's an awesome time over there at MillvilleMusic.org for information. That's uh, May 12th coming up here, so so not too far away. Uh, <laughs> coming up, uh, of course, uh, we got we got a hell of a lineup for guests. Uh, we got Brian Conf- Crawford from the River's Edge joining us next week. John Carmen, uh, we rescheduled him because things come up, as they do. Uh, another old old school uh, uh, podcaster back in the day with the G Spud, uh, Cynthia Klosky of Shift Collaborative, and Kenny Chen of uh, Ascender will be joining us here uh, later in May as well. And uh, and keep an eye out, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're actually going to have speaking of Millville Music Fest, Max Out is going to be joining us. Uh, members of that band is also going to be on the Millville Music Fest, and uh, we're working on getting another band involved in one of the shows as well. Uh, hopefully, we can announce that uh, very very soon. As soon as we get his. I would, I would, you know, band practice is all the time. So you have to kind of dance around that as well. Uh, Scott, it's plug time. What do you got going on? Of all course, right, so Pitchworks, of yeah, course. First off, I need you not to tell Kenny Chen about my technology fear mongering a few minutes ago. Okay, because okay. He will shame and chide me when next we meet. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking for me, first of all, rethink that. But... You can always find me at Pitchworks, P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S. That is a podcast. It is a website. It is, it's fantastic. It's literally the best thing that's going to happen to you today. Um, I am one half of the Colonel's team. You can find us at K-R-N-L-S dot C-O. Uh, we're the strategy and insight people. We consult with you know businesses that are on the come up. And uh, Great yeah. picture of you hanging out with your business partner on here. Where? Oh, on the website? On the website, yes. Yes, we have a very, very hard line regimented way about us. Um, (laughs) All the giggles. You you know what? I mean, it's kind of funny because, you know, typically, like, we try to stay away from the word consultant, Mm -hmm. right? You know, because a lot of people reach for that word, that consultant word, as a a way of sort of, like, pumping themselves up a little bit. Um, But sometimes it's hard for people to, to... sort of wrap their mind around what it is that we do, right? The easiest way to say it is if you're trying to find a way to do something, just ask us and we've probably seen somebody do something close to it and we can come up with a recipe that fits you. So strategy and insight. And uh, that's me. I'm involved in like 20 other things, but I know you got a hard that, stuff. That, that's, 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 <laughs> that actually makes more sense than consultants, like a consultancy kind of to, in my head you can you credit that you can credit olga pagoda for that mm-hmm. my, my partner she's the genius behind all of that she's mm-hmm. like look everyone hates this and it sucks so we're not doing it and i went <laughs> that is a rational argument that i can get behind but you're doing the thing that it's supposed like that it's supposed to be actually yeah just right? do the work right yeah yeah you know? yeah like our clients are really cool in the fact that we can sit down with them and be like just tell me where you're trying to go mm-hmm. right and and they'll say to us like oh, you know 
what I really want to do is make it so that the business can hire two more people because mm-hmm. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> and that's really common in startups. I'm very familiar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're feeling yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, ad rates. I'm telling you. Ad rate. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, for real. Advertising are... at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously. I mean, people ought to get a tax write off. Um, the the way that you sit down though with people, I mean, we we have one one client who, you know, years later, it's like, look, you know what, I love what I do. I just I need help because I'm starting to get gray hair and I can't sleep at night. <laughs> you know, it's just the business has grown, but the the staffing hasn't. So yeah, we yeah. didn't say we're consultants on manpower. We said, hey, let's just see if we can help you. Sometimes you just need somebody um, outside the scope of what you're doing. Something you're close too close to the force to figure out what's going on there, right? You and need you somebody need... with too many projects. Yeah, yeah. Who's just basically like listening to what other people are doing and then seeing mm-hmm. whether or not they can apply it to your situation. Exactly. And that's kind of what we do. Exactly. Awesome. Go check it out. And of course, we have a great discussion with you in the awesome channel archives uh, from a little bit ago. You got me when I was a young buck. Man. Oh. Mm-hmm. What were we? Ten, 20 episodes in? 10 years? Maybe. Yeah. What are you up to now? More. <laughs> uh, 80 comes out in the morning. 80. Okay. Uh, All right. 80 comes out with Max Miller from the Washington area business incubator. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, let me just plug those people because they're great people. Uh, rather than earlier in the show, we were talking about people trying to like push everything into being like a phone app. I forget exactly how you said it, right? Mm-hmm. But Max, he's got his like JD and his MBA and all these different things. And he's working with people that make cheese, but he's treating them. He's putting them through like a typical, like, you know, uh, lean startup kind of a methodology. Like, you know, yeah, let's make stuff using what's in our backyard because Washington is half rural more than half. Right. And, and he's being serious about like, rather than treating it as a one size fits all let's, and they're based out of Washington and Jefferson college. Right. And they're actually helping people that are like making yarn, like artisanal, you know, entrepreneurship. And yeah, I mean, they've got as much of my support as they want. I, I like it a lot. Awesome. Awesome. Katie dude is, a lot going on with you, the Scarehouse podcast, of course, yes. and every other podcast that you're yes. on here and there in stages you're hosting. And wrestling I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> yes. You interview a snake man. You interview a lot of people. Yes. I think, uh, I'm trying to remember who's coming up this week, because I think Snake Man's going to be next week, Ophidian. Mm. So, uh, Indie Mayhem Show, you'll be contributing to that for the next two weeks at least. I know. It just keeps <laughs> showing up. But like, hey, it's more of me being ridiculous on a cat. So, go check that out over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. So. <laughs> and uh of course john chichilla from chilla central out there in dormont <laughs> they've renamed dormont it is now chilla central there you yes. go. that's way better actually high above <laughs> dormont pa overlooking his minions <laughs> is john chichilla the guy to go over the big bank international esquire chillatech.net <laughs> Yeah, at chilla on the, on the twitters john chichilla on the facebooks uh, and yeah chilla tech on that uh, are your pictures from the weekend up yet anywhere? That people they are on Facebook. Okay. So, go so there's up. a slew of pictures from um, Steel City Con. Um, Christopher had a blast. There's nothing like a four-year-old roaming around thinking that the real people from Star Wars are all amongst him. So Aww. there's a lot of fun. <laughs> well, you, see, you don't even have to take him to Disney World. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty and there were some amazing costumes I, the, the one the one guy that was thor with the lightning around him was, oh he was, was so cool pretty amazing awesome okay hang on a second though that thing about the pictures are up on facebook that's why facebook's not going away mm-hmm. like on the one hand we're like yeah zuckerberg's evil and he gets up there like a robot by the way check out my new stuff on facebook <laughs> Because it's, it's the one place the family's at, friends are at, people. Oh, like, John, that I, was an accusation. I do it to. Okay? <laughs> There's no judgment. It's just. I and have, by the way, at no point did I say get off of Facebook. Like, I don't think that was the. Dude, that's a logical conclusion. The, and we all know. Yeah, it. yeah, true. We're but like, yeah, you know, Dr. Not, Evil has your data. We're like, yeah. well, yeah, but I need it to promote my crap. But so does, does Dr. Evil 2 over here. So does Dr. Evil 3 over here. And little Dr. Evil's. I got my beard started. You want me to go the rest of the way, Amish? You just say so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, producer Missy, for trying to hold this glue together uh, of a show. And uh, thank you to our awesome audience in the chat room all night. I know uh, uh, Alex Carr is apparently uh, uh, reading his ad as a summoning call. Uh, so, so play that Final Fantasy music and he shows up in the chat room. Uh, so, and everybody else, thank you to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.